church. How are we doing on this glorious Sunday morning? Come on, you guys can do better than that. Let me hear it. Are we happy to be in the house of the Lord? Much better, much better. I want to thank everyone for coming out, for those that are here and for those that are joining us online. Uh, we know online experience is a great experience, but there's no experience like the experience in the house. And our brothers and sisters here can testify to that. So I urge you guys that are online, come out next Sunday because we have a special speaker at 1030 to join us in the live experience. For those that don't know me, my name is Edric Valdez. I'm one of the servant leaders here at Ignite Church. Been here since the beginning. Um, and every once in a while, the pastors give me permission to come up here and, and bring a word. And I'm honored because actually this time, I actually get to close out a series. I've always started a series somewhere in the middle, but I was never the closer. But this week, I am the closer, so I'm excited about that. Because even though, to be, be honest, being the closer is a very difficult um, task, believe it or not. Number one, you're the last thing of the series that people remember. Number two, you have to follow a great group of speakers, which Pastor Eric, Brother Jose, Pastor Armando, those are tough speakers to follow. So I hope I can do them justice. And if not, just go ahead and, you know, let me know. Just don't, you know, just so I feel good about it. Just clap whether you're enjoying it or not. Just go ahead and clap just to motivate me to keep going. Uh, before we get into the series, I want to go ahead and open a word of prayer. So join me real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you this morning, Lord, and I ask you to use me as your tool, Father, Lord, as your mechanism of delivery, Father, Lord, that it's your words that are speaking through me, that it is not me, but it is you that is bringing the word to our brothers and sisters in Christ here in the house and online, that they may take this word and it may nourish their spirit. And when they leave here, they'll be renewed and restored for the week ahead. It's your name I pray. Amen. So as you know, we're in a series that's so Miami, hence the Miami look. Uh, I love these series because we get to wear shorts and get comfortable, so it's amazing. So, but we're in that So Miami series. And just to give those uh, brothers and sisters that didn't get to see week one, week two, or week three, I'm going to give you a little recap of what we want. In week one, Pastor Eric, he spoke about the power of the tongue, how God has given us the authority to bind or loosen through the power of Jesus Christ. For that, I want you guys to remember one word, authority, okay? Authority. For week two, Brother Jose, he spoke about how we need to build a solid foundation rooted in Jesus Christ and God's word. How even if we lose a piece, with God's help, we can rebuild the foundation to be solid once again. For that, I want you to remember solid foundation. And for week three, Pastor Armando spoke about that sometimes in life, we help others. But when it comes time for others to help us, no one shows up. However, if we claim the power of God over our lives, God will always arrive to back us up. For there, I want you to remember, help others. You see, in week four of that Miami, we're going to focus on a topic that the Lord has led me to believe is the summation of this entire series. And you know, in Miami, we talked about the weather, we talked about amazing things, but what would be Miami without our dominoes? That's right, dominoes. We all know that in Miami, whether your culture is Hispanic, African-American, it doesn't matter. Dominoes is a staple. Give me a sec. Let me set myself up here. Make it look presentable. Camera people want nice shots. So there you go. All right. So we can't have that so Miami without involving Miami's greatest pastime. The game of all games, dominoes. I'm going to give you a little history about dominoes. Dominoes is a family of tile-based games played with gaming pieces. Each domino is a rectangular tile usually with a line dividing its faces into square ends. Each end is marked with several spots or is blank. The backs of the tiles is a set of indistinguishable, either blank or having some common design. The gaming pieces made up, make up a domino set, sometimes are called a deck or a pack. The, the traditional European domino set consists of 28 tiles, also known as pieces, bones, rocks, stones, men's, men, cards, or just dominoes featuring all combinations of spot counts between zero and six. A domino set is in a, gener in a generic gaming deck 
like playing cards or dice. That is a variety of games that can be played with set. Another form of entertainment using domino pieces is the practice of dominoes toppling. Sorry, lost my face. The name domino is probably derived from the resemblance to a kind of carnival costume worn during the Viennan carnival, often consisting of a black hooded robe and a white mask. Despite the carnage of the word polynomy, as a, as a generalization, there is no connection between the word domino and the number two in any language. The most common played domino games are Domino Whist, Matador, and Mugs. Other popular forms include Texas 42, Chicken Foot, Concentration, Double Fives, Bones, and Mexican Train. And most commonly in the Cuban culture, we play the doble nine, right? The double nines. So just a little, a little bit of, of that. You see in Miami, no matter what culture, race, or what area code you live in, at some point, you've participated in a game of dominoes. The game of dominoes has many different names in many different cultures and is played in different ways. No matter what you call the game or how it is played, they all share the same common theme. The game unites individuals and promotes fellowship and love between family, friends, and even strangers. You see, the game of dominoes is a great example of what God tells us in Scripture about what can happen when we, as God's people, become united in a common goal. In the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Beyond all things, put on and wrap yourself in unselfish love, which is a perfect bond of unity. For everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been involved in some serious domino games. And for that moment, it may not create the best example of unity, especially in the Cuban culture. And you guys know what I'm talking about. You see, I was going to show you a video, but unfortunately, this video has certain words that can't be shared for public audience. So I'm going to give you the short version of the story. It's basically an example, and it's an exaggeration, of a gentleman from Cuba who played in the tournament and was playing in Cuba in 1950s and was playing against a, a female competitor. Never entered. She comes in the tournament. This guy's been champion for 10 years. She beats everybody and leaves. And this he, then she comes and, and flees to Miami. So then the, the, 50 years later, it sort of happens they live in the same building, and he's returning a package to, to an apartment. And it happens to be the lady with the same name from back in the day. This gentleman held such a grudge that he couldn't have his rematch that he asked her the question about the name. Oh, tu eres Maria, whatever. And she goes, yes, I am. He goes, did you play in a tournament? Yes, I did. And he lost it. He went off. I can't believe you went to Cuba. You won. You took the championship from me. You didn't let me rematch. Well, they were arguing back and forth for 20 minutes. And it was funny. It's a, it's a satire. But you see, at the end of the video, the game still unites us. Because at the end, he gets mad. He storms off. He trips. He falls. The lady goes, you want to come in for a coffee? He goes, "See, sí, un cafecito. So he comes in. And they sit. And they begin to play dominoes again. Finally, they get to have the rematch that he never had 50 years ago. So what I'm trying to say is that at the end of the video, the game still unites us. No matter the issues between them, the love of the game was power enough for them to overcome their differences. You see in Psalms 133.1, it says, Behold, how good and pleasant is it for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. You see, you and I each represent a piece of dominoes. Some pieces are blank. Some, in this case, are different colors and or have various number of combinations. But you see, even though each of these pieces is different, they are all needed to be able to complete the set. You can't play the game of dominoes if you're missing pieces. Because then what happens? You'll never accomplish the goal, which is winning the game. So each piece is important. 
You see, history teaches us that unity and strength and cautions us to submerge and overcome our differences in the quest for common goals to strive with all of our combined strengths for this is a true path of unity. But let's go back. It says history, his story. You see, God in Ephesians 2.14 says, For he himself is our peace and our bond of unity. He who made both groups, the Jews and the Gentiles, into one body and broke down the barrier. You see, so it's his story. All through the Bible, and specifically the years that Jesus Christ was here on earth, and he walked, he gave us examples of what we need to do on a daily basis to unite our, our cultures, to be able to live as one in unity. Because you see, we are the pieces. We are. But Christ is a table where all the pieces work together in unity. You see, the table is our solid foundation where we can build upon it. Through God's guidance, he has given us the authority to forge a path. And along the way, we help others in fulfilling their purpose in God. So remember those three things I told you guys earlier about? Authority, solid foundation, and helping others. Those are all key components to having a country or having a church or having a home that is united in one goal. You see, in the book of Ephesians 4.13, it says, Until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, to become a mature believer, reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ, manifesting you know, his spirit completeness, and exercising our spiritual gifts in unity. <clears throat> you see, unity is strength. Where there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. Go ahead and take a look at the screens. We built a baseball themed topple that tells the story of Dominic on the underdog team, the Blue Serpents. Go! And we're off. The ball is swinging through the air. Is it going to hit the wall? Play ball! Down comes the play ball wall. Off the stairs, coming up on the baseball glove chain reaction. And now heading over to the scoreboard. Ball one. <laughs> Down goes the cap field. Heading back over to the scoreboard now. Strike one. <laughs> Following the pink line now over to the fall wall. Uh-oh, the trigger for the wall failed, so it didn't fall. But the domino line is still going and headed back to the scoreboard. Let's see if the line will trigger ball two on the board. That's a 2-1 count. Here goes the green line coming up to the swinging bat trick. I was going to hit that baseball. Oh, come on. Come on. Swinging round and round. Boom. Back to the scoreboard now to trigger that second strike on the board. Right. Two and two. Here we go. Following the yellow line. Heading up the stairs to the popcorn chain reaction trick. Popcorn is popped. Back to the scoreboard to mark up ball three. This is it. 
Three, two, count. Here we go, the big finale. The wind up, the pitch, he swings. Will they score? He cranks it out of the park. Go crazy, folks, that's a winner. All right, so see this video shows you one thing. It is a different way to play dominoes, but it gives the same point. In order for those dominoes to fall at the exact moment and trigger the reaction, they all have to be aligned up in the same alignment with the same spacing and they had to fall in the same direction in order to continue to trigger the event of the ballpark. And as you saw in the video, if there were one or two pieces that were out of alignment, it, stand, it stops it from toppling and from showing what it can do. So that's the way it is with God. If we, as a nation, as a church, or as individuals are not united, in the common goal and are aligned with the same morals and characteristics, whatever direction we are facing, we are going to fail because we are not building or creating that connection that allows the next piece to fulfill their purpose in God. You see, strength is derived from unity, the range of all collective vision through God's purpose for our lives is far greater than those of the individual. We long for unity, but we are unwilling to pay the price. But of course, true unity starts with a change in attitude, a broadening of our minds, and an opening of our hearts. Our ability to reach unity in diversity will be the beauty and the test of all civilization. And that was spoken by Mahatma Gandhi, who was an individual who had a different religious belief, but had the same thought process. Unity is the key to all. So no matter what culture you are, what race you are, what belief system you are, if we don't come together as a whole, we can't accomplish anything. I'm gonna ask now, right where you're sitting, if you have not built a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me. And then once we do that prayer, I'm going to close because I feel it in my heart that we need to pray for our nation. Because if you guys watch the news, there's a lot of things going on right now. There's a lot of critical points, both locally and nationally, that are pivotal in the direction that the Lord will want us to go. So I'm going to pray for our current leaders, and I'm going to pray for those leaders that hopefully the Lord will be able to instill, and we as a nation will come together to make the right choices. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you today, Father Lord, and I just pray for everyone here, Father Lord. Lord, I pray for those that are watching online as well, Father Lord. If they do not know you, I do not have a relationship with you, Father Lord, and they want to seek that relationship with you, Father Lord. I pray that they repeat the prayer with me, Father Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior so I may build that relationship with him and create that unity and that bond with your son, Jesus Christ. I know that he died on the cross and paid for my sins, and he is the only avenue that I have to be able to get to you and to be in heaven one day. Lord, I just ask you right now to come into my heart, to take over my spirit, and to be now the guiding, my solid foundation to guide my path, Father. And it's your name I pray, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before right now, Lord, and I lift up this special prayer, Father, Lord. Right now, Lord, we come as a body of Christ, both present and online, Father, Lord. We come in unity, Father, Lord, and we ask right now, we pray for our nation, Father, Lord. Lord, as we know things are going on, Father, Lord, they're not of you, Father, Lord. They're not God principles, Father, Lord. And we ask you right now, Lord, to open the eyes and give with them to those leaders. 
to our current leaders, Father, we pray that they have wisdom, Father, Lord. Lord, that their spirits are touched by the Holy Spirit, Father, Lord. Lord, that someone brings to life, Father, Lord, what your goals and purposes are, Father, Lord, as it was written many, many years ago for our forefathers, Lord, because it says in God we trust for a reason, Lord. And I ask you to guide those, Father, Lord. Lord, in these upcoming elections, Father, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that you will be done, Father, Lord, that the right individuals that represent the right characteristics, the right moral values, Father, Lord, that this nation was founded on, Father, Lord, that those individuals will come into office, Father, Lord, that they'll be able to help turn around this nation that is lost, Father, Lord, that is currently in disarray, Father, Lord, and there is no sign of unity, Lord. Lord, we need unity in this nation, Father, Lord. We need guidance, Father, Lord. We need you above all else, Father, Lord. We need you to be the guiding light Lord, to show how great this nation can be, Father, Lord, when we trust in God and follow in his ways, Father, Lord. Lord, and it's your name I pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I hope you've enjoyed today's word. As remember, next week we do have Dino.